Hello, welcome to First Chapter Friday. This week I will be reading the first two chapters of Lily and the Night Creatures by Nick Lake, illustrated by Emily Gravitt, and published by Simon & Schuster for Young Readers. Let's dive right in. Lily and the Night Creatures. Before the beginning. In the garden of the house, a mole was talking to a crow. Adorable illustration. The sun was setting. That was the time of day, but it was also the reason the animals were visible at all. In the daytime, they could not be seen unless they wanted to be. Do you think she will be here soon? said the mole. The girl? I don't know, said the crow, hopping from one foot to the other. Why should I? I tunnel in darkness, said the mole. You're clever. You soar in the air. I'm clever too, said a mouse, who was leaning against the severed trunk of a tree. No, you're not, said the mole. True, said the mouse, not very sadly, but I'm willing. Well, we'll all have to be willing if the girl is going to win, said the crow. There was a long pause then. The house was, lo was a looming presence in front of them, its edges becoming less definite as the light faded from the sky. The mole sniffed the air. She smelled something that could not be put into words, a certain slackness in the evening, but a dangerous one. Something laid out as if loose on the framework of the world that might at any moment be pulled taut. Goodness, we're all very serious, aren't we? said the mouse. Shall I sing a song? Only if you want me to eat you, said the snake, who had slithered up to join them. Don't think I won't. Fine, said the mouse with a hoof. <laughs> they watched the house. She won't win if she doesn't come, said the mouse eventually. She will come, won't she? She'll come, said the mole. I can smell it. Well, there we have it, said the crow. Mole's nose has spoken. It was my mouth action. Oh, the crow had given Mole a withering glance. Now, hush, he said, folding his wings. We don't want them to hear us. Here's the illustration of the house. The animals fell silent and watched the house. It was empty, but it was quick in the old sense of the word. And it was the old sense, the senses the animals cared about most quivering with life. A shadow moved past a window, though there was no light to explain it. The animals shivered, even the snake, who was cold-blooded, and the mole, who couldn't see. They waited. Next illustration. Chapter 1. The house didn't want her. Lily could see that right away. It was her house, but it was dark. No lights on, the windows square, black holes in the wall, like someone had put out its eyes. Even the street light just at the end of the road had blown. The nearest light came from the pub down the lane, and that wasn't close, the Sherborne Arms. Sometimes at night, drunk people rolled bottles out into the road to burst car tires. The housing committee had been round. Lily was stubborn, though. She wasn't going to let the house scare her. I just need to go in for a minute, Granny Squeak said from the driver's seat of the car. Lily called her Granny Squeak, Granny Squeak because when Lily had been little, her granny would always squeak with excitement when she saw her. Now she was more liable to sigh or get wet around the eyes. Okay, said Lily, unclicking her seatbelt. She wanted to be at home in her kitchen in her room. It was what had gotten her through the day. She wanted Wilo, even though she was too old for him, really. Oh no, sweetie, said Granny. You stay here and rest. I'll only be a minute. Your mom's left instructions. Okay, said Lily again. Could you get me Wilo? It was the kind of thing she would never have admitted to Scarlet and Summer back when they were still friends, that she slept with him of a soft toy. Of course, they weren't her friends anymore anyway. People tended to draw away from her now like what she had might be catching. But Granny was already out the door, then shutting it with a heavy clunk. She left the engine running. It was springtime, but still chilly. Leaning back into the passenger seat, Lily closed her eyes. She had just left the hospital and her mum had gone into it with her dad to have the baby. 
Lily didn't actually know if it was the same hospital. She didn't know anything apart from what her grandmother had told her when she picked her up this morning, that the baby was coming, that Lily was going to stay with her for a few days, that Granny Squeak was going to look after her, and they could even stay up to watch East Enders. Big whoop, Lily wanted to say to that. Her arm was still sore from the drip. When she went there to the hospital, they took the liquid out of her veins and cleaned it and did other things to it that Lily didn't understand, and they put it back in, like they were sucking her out and filling her with a new person. And only the outline of her stayed the same. She didn't like that idea. And it took all day with Granny Squeak sitting there reading her People's Friend magazine and Lily listening to music and scrolling through TikTok. Usually it was her parents who took her, and it should have been nice getting to spend the day with Granny Squeak instead, but Lily was too distracted by everything. At the end of today's session, the doctor, who had a mustache like a walrus, had come up to her with another needle. Lily hated needles, especially injections, which she knew perfectly well didn't make sense because she'd already sort of had a needle in her hand all day under a bandage with a tube coming out of it. But that was different. That wasn't a sharp, thin thing going into your muscle. Iron, he explained. Your levels get low otherwise. You don't make enough of it. I'm fine with that, she said. Can't I just eat some nails or something? Ha ha, he said. Actually said, not laughter. You won't be fine if you eat nails. Trust me. So she'd closed her eyes and cried a bit, which she was embarrassed about, and he'd, gone, he, and he'd done the injection. She made her mom cry the other day, and that was worse. We thought we'd talk about names for the baby, her mom had said. Dad was holding her hand, smiling. I don't want to, Lily had replied. Well, that's okay. We don't have to decide now. I don't want to ever. I don't want the baby. I don't want you to be big and fat and round, and I don't want this. She pushed her pills and water away from her, across the oak table in the new kitchen that was traced all over with thin lines and swirls of color from her pens when she was younger. I want to go back to how everything used to be. That was when her mom cried. The door of the car swung open with a rush of cold air, scented with a bonfire somewhere. Granny Squeak hefted a big duffel bag into the back seat, along with a couple of shopping bags, then climbed in behind the wheel. Your mom left a note on the table, she said, phone number of the hospital, that sort of thing, and a list of everything you'd need in case they have to stay in for a few days. Clothes, frozen meals, your meds. But you might have to help with all that, she added, in what was clearly supposed to be a cheerful tone. I'm no good with timings. She started the engine and pulled away. Sure, said Lily, without really meaning it. Did you get Wilo? Oh, said Granny Squeak, was that on the list? Sorry, I must have missed that. Oh, well, too late now. She shifted into fourth gear. No, said Lily, I asked as you were... She stopped. There was no point. Wilo was her whale. Lily had slept with him most nights in her life and wasn't sure she could sleep without him. He was from Ikea, which wasn't important, but she'd gotten him when she was two, the very first toy she'd ever chosen herself, and that was important. Lily needed Wilo, and Wilo wasn't there. Here's a picture of Wilo. But that was okay because Lily had no intention of being shunted aside, of being sent away from home anyway. Everyone else thought they knew best but it was her home too, her home first. That's just the first little snippet of this amazing little story, Lily and the Night Creatures by Nick Lake. Check it out from the Alameda Free Library and we'll see you next time on First Chapter Friday.